Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to have another math tutorial video for you and this is on lesson 1.7, which is multiplying by two digit numbers. Now most of you may be wondering, I don't need a tutorial on how to multiply by two digit numbers. I know my multiplication facts and multiplying by a two digit number is not too difficult. But what makes this lesson a little bit challenging for some is the fact that we talk about something called partial products. So in my example problems, I'm going to talk to you about partial products and how to use them and why I think they're a great tool for students to use. And we're also going to talk about why it's important to estimate your answer before you actually solve the problem and how an estimate can help you figure out whether or not your final product or your final answer is reasonable and that you can feel comfortable in knowing that it is correct. So I'm going to flip the camera around and we're going to work on some problems together and then I will see you back here in just a little bit. All right, thanks. Okay, the first thing that we want to talk about in solving today's problems is coming up with our, with our estimate and using compatible numbers to help us figure out what an estimated answer would be. Now, the first thing that we want to talk about is compatible numbers and what are compatible numbers. In class, I usually tell students that compatible numbers could be thought of as like best friends. When you're best friends with someone, you two get along, life is easy, it's no effort, things go smoothly, it's great. Same thing with compatible numbers. Compatible numbers are numbers that you can easily multiply together. They work well together. There's no difficulty in solving them when they're put together. And it just makes life a little bit easier. Now, when you're coming up with your compatible numbers, you're going to change your original numbers to something that is relatively close and easily multiplied with the other compatible number that you create. So for 28, I'm going to change 28 to 30 because 30 is very close to the number 28. And then I'm gonna change the number 18 to 20. Same reason why, because 20 is very close to 18. And instead of multiplying 28 times 18 right now, I'm gonna multiply 30 times 20. Now these are compatible because this is a very easily solved math problem. If you go back to lesson point five and think of a basic fact that you could use to solve this, I would use three times two, which is six. And then I would say to myself, okay, I have two zeros and my factors. So I'm going to add my two zeros there and my estimated answer is going to be 600. So I know that my real answer to 28 times 18 should end up being somewhere around 600. If it's way off from 600, I know I'm wrong. So we're going to put 600 in our minds. We're going to store it in our memory bank and tell ourselves our answer to 28 times 18 should be somewhere around that. Now let's talk about how to multiply 28 times 18 using partial products. So at partial products, what you're doing is you're multiplying one piece at a time, one place value position at a time, and then you're going to add your two products that you come up with. So I'm going to rewrite this as 28 times 18. That's my original problem. And the only thing that I'm going to use is I'm going to first multiply the ones place. So I'm only going to multiply 28 times 8 for right now. So I'm going to write it down here, 28 times 8. I should know that 8 times 8 is 64, and 8 times 2 is 16, plus 6 is going to be 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So I'm going to write 22 there. This is not my final answer though because this was when I only multiplied in the ones place. So I'm going to put a little P, P there to tell me this is a partial product that I'm going to need a little bit later. Now I'm going to multiply by the tens place. So on the side, I'm going to do 28. Now there's a one in the tens place. That does not mean that you're going to multiply 28 times one. That means you're going to multiply 28 by 110, which would be written as 10. Okay, that's a very common mistake. You're not multiplying 28 times one. You gotta make sure you realize that the value of that one is 110. Now, if you look here, you should also be able to use what we've learned in lesson 1.5 and know that that's a mental math problem. I can just use my powers of 10, or I can tell myself 28 times one is gonna be 28. 
I'm dealing with the first power of 10, so there's gonna be one zero and 10, and just add that zero there. That's not my final answer either. This is a partial product. So I'm gonna put a P, P label there, and I'm gonna put in parentheses. Okay, so those are the first two things you wanna do. I've now solved two parts, or I've come up with two partial products to 28 times 18. The next step is, you're gonna add your two partial products together. So I'm gonna erase it and I'm gonna remember my numbers 224 and 280. So I'm gonna take 224 and I'm gonna add that to 280. Four plus zero is four. Two plus eight is 10. Two plus two is four plus one is five. So I am now saying that my answer to 28 times 18 is 505. Now what I like about this is that it just breaks down your multiplication problem into two smaller, simpler problems, one of which became a mental math problem. The other reason why I like this method is that it takes away the risk of a student putting their digits in the wrong place value when they multiply using the traditional method, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So if I did 28 times 18, and I were a student, I would, most students will start off correctly and they will do, okay, eight times eight is 64, eight times two is 16, plus two is 22, and they'd be great, and that would be fine. The issue then becomes is sometimes students will forget to put a placeholder here, and they'll just keep multiplying. So they would make the mistake of doing one times eight, that's eight, one times two, that's two, they add these numbers together. Sorry if my numbers are crooked and sideways. Four plus eight is 12. Two plus two is four. Plus one is five. And two plus nothing is two. And they'd make the mistake of thinking that their answer is 252. Strictly because they put this eight in the wrong place because they forgot to put their placeholder there. So using partial products, takes away the risk of a student doing that and it creates a situation where a lot of times there's a mental math problem that you could easily solve instead of going through all the steps. So let's solve it traditionally the regular way so that I can prove to you partial products does work. So you have 28 times 18, 8 times 8 is 64, 8 times 2 is 16 plus 2 is 22. You have to remember to put that placeholder there so you don't make the mistake like most students have done in the past, like I just showed you. Then you're gonna do one times eight is eight. One times two is two. You're gonna add these, you get four. Eight plus two is 10. Two plus two is four, plus one is five. And you get 504, which was the same answer that we got with our partial products. So now that you have your partial products, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna go back to that estimated answer. So if you remember, our estimate said our answer should be somewhere around 600. Our actual answer was 504. Now this is where you gotta really just trust yourself that you did the math correctly because some of you may think, well 504 is not that close to 600. But it is relatively close. It is close enough for you to feel like, okay, I took my time, I checked my work, this is the answer that I got. It's relatively close to my estimated answer, so chances are I'm correct. Now if this was 200 number, like let's say 200 or 1,000, then you should know for sure that that's pretty far off from 600. So as long as you're within 100 or so of your estimate, you should be fine. Also realize that your estimated answer is a little bit higher because if you remember when we were making our compatible numbers, we rounded those numbers up. So our answer to our estimated answer is gonna be higher than our actual answer. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and give you some final thoughts and then we'll go from there. All right, welcome back. I hope those example problems that we went over together have been helpful to you. And also for tonight's homework, please make sure that I do want you to estimate because I think estimating your answer before you solve it is a good way to help you know if you're on the right track and if your answer is likely to be correct. 
Remember with estimation, everybody estimates a little bit differently. So I may come up with one set of numbers as my compatible numbers that I use to estimate. And the next person may come up with something different. As long as your compatible numbers are reasonably close to the original problem and your estimate is reasonably close, to your actual product, then you should be good to go and you should be on the right track. So I hope this video was helpful and as always, don't forget to put your first name, last name, number in your paper so that you get credit and I will see you here for the next video. Bye everyone.